uh, important Orachim HaKadosh. He has about 10 more, 15 approaches in Bechuk Saitei Lechu. The second, it's uh, chapter 26, Posuk Gimel. In Bechuk Saitei Lechu. If you walk in my statutes, that's it's Mosai Tishmaru, and you observe my mitzvahs, Vasisim Osam, which seems to be a little redundant. It's Mitzvosai Tishmaru, Vasisim Osam. We had earlier, last week, we discussed Shmira is what is retention. That means you have to study them. Asisim Osam is you actually, you execute the mitzvah. That's the actualization of the mitzvah. But the beginning, he begins, first we're referring to Chukosai. I mean, the Torah itself in its entirety, are they Chukim? Statutes, as we said yesterday, that the Torah is divided into three categories of mitzvahs. We have Mishpotim. Mishpotim are rational laws. We have Edus. Mitzvahs are based upon testament, eating the matzah on Pesach. The sukkah, the man yedu dorsechi in besukas hoshavtis bnei Yisrael to commemorate the ani akavot. Each, those are edus. Shabbos is an edus. It's a testament that God is the creator of the world. And then we have chukim, we have statutes, dietary laws, shatnis, wool and linen, crossbreeding crops, animals. These are all chukim statutes paraduma, but yet. Here the Torah says, If you walk in my chukim, why they, so evidently here we're talking about the whole Torah itself, is chukim. Is it chukim or, as we said, the mishpotim, the reidus, and the chukim, the three, the three classifications. And together, that's the whole Torah. So we said many times, the Torah itself, the reason why we do a mitzvah is nothing to do with the way we process it, the way we understand it. Every mitzvah is given to us. I always mention the uh, Rav Chaim Vital, who was the student, who was the main Talmud of the Ariza, who recorded all, all the Kisri Ariza were written, were recorded by Rav Chaim Vital. He was the Talmud of the Ariza. And he writes, and the Chavetz Chaim very often cites the, the Rav Chaim Vital, that just as we have Ramachi, Mitzvah say we have 248 positive commandments, and we have Ramachi Vorim, and we have 248 parts to our body, and there is a corresponding nature. There's a correlation between every mitzvah and every, which corresponds to every part of the body. The, uh, you know, in, in uh, Kriyashma, the Chazan, if you, one davens with a minion, the Chazan concludes the Kriyashma Hashem Elkechem Emes. The 245 words in Kriyashma, and the Chazan concludes Hashem Elkechem Emes, so we should conclude with the number of 248. And if one doesn't have with the minion, we begin the Kriyashma with Kel Melech Nemon. Kel Melech Nemon. So those are the three words which, together with the words of the Kriyashma, we have 248. Why? So the Mishbura says, because when we, Kriyashma is Kabbalah Samach Shamayim. Kabbalist mitzvahs, we're accepting what we're saying, we're accepting on our totality of our being. So therefore these words correspond, touch every part of our being, which is 248. That's the, that's the reason why the number 248 is so important in terms of the Kriyashma. So Rav Chaim Vital says, just as you have 248 parts of the body, the 248 parts to the neshama. We know the neshama is, is the basis for our function. Every part of the body functions because the neshama touches, the soul touches every part of the body. So therefore, as a result of that, just every part of the neshama has to be developed, has to be refined and advanced. So the mitzvah say go corresponds to one aspect of the neshama, and as a result of that, that part of the neshama is developed and spiritualized. Therefore, we have 248 mitzvah say. That's, that's the way it is, so good. So what's the reason why and the lavim is 265 negative commandments. So it says that corresponds to the sinews. That's shasa, that's shasa, gidim, 
sinews, arteries. That, that's what it corresponds to. So there are other aspects of the neshama. It has to actually touches it, and it doesn't allow it to be diminished. This is the reason. So if that's the case, it, it's unrelated why, you, why you're not per, permitted to steal. It's unethical, it's immoral. But why is it immoral or ethical? Because the way we see doing something which is unacceptable based on societal values, that's, it's not unrelated to that. That's the way we process it. That's the way we internalize it. But the reality is because it is essential to one spiritual makeup, which is the Nisham of the Jew. A non-Jew only has Shev Mitzvah B'nei Noach, only has seven Noahide laws. He has no relevance to the Tarant Mitzvahs, to the positive and negative commandments, 248, 365, because he has a total different spiritual makeup. So as a, and it, it affects each of us differently. A non-Jew who violates his Shev Mitzvahs is different than the way it affects the Jew when he violates any of the positive and negative commandments. It's a different spiritual makeup. So basically, all the mitzvahs, positive, negative, they're all chukim. It's because God decreed this is what we need in terms of spiritualizing our neshama and not to diminish our neshama, our souls. So everything is chukim, everything in the reality. So therefore, they're chukim. What's the word telechu? It's imchukosai, tasu, imchukosai, tishmur. What's the tele? What's the walking? Walking. So the question is this. I mean, he dressed, the, the, the Orchaim Kodesh speaks about the Telechu also. Also, Rashi says, what's in Chuksai Telechu? Yochu Zekim mitzvos. Maybe when he says, you should walk in my statutes, is referring to the actualization of the mitzvahs. Shu Omer Es Mitzvosai Tishmru, Harikim Mitzvah. So the way Rashi signing Chazal, the Tishmu is not studying for attention. Tish means... Like Shema V'Zohar, you observe the mitzvahs. That you have to toil in Torah. That's that's the chok. So Rachaim Hakodesh explains, cites the Chazal. Why does one forget? What why, why does one have to review? Why does one continuously have to review? And every time we review, we delve and we retain it at another level. Of course, he, the Chazal, the Midrash tells us that if a person would immediately understand and retain everything, he'd have no reason to study. And he has no, no, there's no incentive to study. As a result of that, Hashem causes one to forget. To forget, as a result of forgetting, therefore, one has to continuously apply himself to be able to process it and retain and to advance yourself continuously. The Rambam writes, this Dr. Chaim doesn't mention, that until when is one obligated to study Torah? Until he dies. Literally, you have an obligation to study until the last moment, your last breath. So Rambam says, why? Why are you obligated to study until the last moment? Because he, he explains, because the moment you stop studying, you begin forgetting. The moment you stop studying, you begin forgetting. I mean, we ourselves don't realize it. I mean, a person has a vivid memory. He has instant recall. But it's not the same as the moment you studied it. It's the, the difference is so slight and so minute, we don't have that sense of that. I'll give you an example. You have a puddle of water, and then afterwards it evaporates. Does one see the evaporation? It's a very, very gradual process, evaporation. Identically, our memories we retain. But as the moment we disengage from whatever we studied, whatever we, we were with it, it starts fading. The process of forgetting begins fading immediately. As a result of that, the Ramam says, therefore one has an obligation to continuously be engaged because the moment you disengage, you begin forgetting and you have an obligation to retain the Torah. So therefore, that, that, that a person forgets, that's a chok. I mean, God could, could have created a person that you have retention where one doesn't forget whatsoever? The answer is no, because if that would be the case, a person would not study. And since the Torah says, Vogisbo yom voloilo, you must engage in Torah day and night, uninterruptedly, you have to be engaged in Torah. So therefore, as a result of that, a person would have no reason to be continuously involved. Now, the Chaim writes in one location that if a person eats sufficiently, uh, protein-wise, called habit, carbohydrate wise, everything wise, and you've, you're sated full. Over time, 
You have to eat again. You have to replenish the system. Why? Because the body burns the calories and consumes the protein, and the body has to be re-nourished and continuously infused with, with whatever nourishment it needs. So even if you eat on Sunday, when it comes Wednesday, if you hadn't eaten since Sunday, you definitely, you have to replenish the body. And if you don't replenish it, the body starts withering and starts dying. So he says, the neshama is eternal. It has to be infused with an energy which is to last for eternity. That, that infusion could only happen in this life. What is the infusion? The infusion is called mitzvahs. Torah mitzvahs, that's the infusion. That's the internal infusion to allow us to be sustained and to function as we're supposed to function forever. When the Shama comes to this existence, it, it's like the tank is empty. The tank is empty. You have to fill the tank. Do you, do you fill the tank with high test or regular? What do you put into the tank? Those are the mitzvahs we do. The mitzvahs, do you do with shlo lishma, do you do with lishma, do you do a reverence, there are many levels. And based on the engagement of the mitzvahs, that will determine to what degree the nisham is infused and the viability and functionality of the soul in terms of how far it is elevated relating to the eternal existence, to the eternal function.